Good evening. Welcome to sleep chamber. It is what it is. What happens, happens. And as for now, there's nothing you can do. When most people think of Sweden, they picture snow-covered landscapes and long, dark winters. And while it's true that Sweden does have cold winters, it also has beautiful summers with long days and warm nights. In fact, Sweden has a very diverse climate, with four distinct seasons. Winter in Sweden starts in December and lasts until March. The days are short, with only around six hours of daylight, and the nights are long and dark. The average temperature in winter is around 5 degrees C, but it can sometimes drop as low as 20 degrees C. Despite the cold, Winter is a popular time to visit Sweden because of the stunning snow-covered scenery. Spring is a brief but beautiful season in Sweden. It starts in April and lasts until May. The days become longer and the weather starts to warm up, with an average temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. The flowers start to bloom and the trees turn green, making for some lovely scenery. Summer is the longest season in Sweden, lasting from June until August. The days are long, with around 18 hours of daylight, and the nights are short and light. The average temperature in summer is 20 degrees Celsius, but it can sometimes get as high as 30 degrees Celsius. This is the perfect time to enjoy all that Sweden has to offer, from its stunning natural scenery to its vibrant cities. Autumn is a beautiful but short season in Sweden. It starts in September and lasts until October. The days become shorter and the weather starts to cool down with an average temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. The leaves on the trees turn red, yellow and orange, making for some stunning scenery. This is the perfect time to go for a walk in the Swedish countryside and enjoy the fresh air. In the Northern Hemisphere, winter is the coldest season of the year. It typically lasts from December to March. In the Southern Hemisphere, winter occurs from June to September. Winter is caused by the Earth's tilt away from the sun. During winter, the sun's rays are weaker and hit the Earth's surface at a lower angle. This causes the atmosphere to cool and the weather to become colder. In the spring, the Earth's tilt starts to bring the sun's rays back towards the equator. The atmosphere warms and the weather becomes milder. Spring is a time of new beginnings, when plants start to grow and animals give birth to their young. In the Northern Hemisphere, spring lasts from March to June. In the Southern Hemisphere, spring occurs from September to December. Summer is the warmest season of the year. It typically lasts from June to September in the Northern Hemisphere and from December to March in the Southern Hemisphere. 
summer is caused by the Earth's tilt towards the sun. During summer, the sun's rays are more direct and hit the Earth's surface at a higher angle. This causes the atmosphere to warm and the weather to become hotter. Autumn is the time of year when the leaves of trees change color and fall to the ground. In the northern hemisphere, autumn lasts from September to December. In the southern hemisphere, autumn occurs from March to June. Autumn is caused by the Earth's tilt away from the sun. As the sun's rays become weaker and hit the Earth's surface at a lower angle, the atmosphere cools and the weather becomes milder. Winter, spring, summer, and autumn are the four seasons of the year. Each season has its own weather conditions and lasts for a different amount of time. In North America, winter lasts from December to February. The weather is cold and there is often snow. Spring lasts from March to May. The weather is warmer and there are often showers. Summer lasts from June to August. The weather is hot and there is often sunshine. Autumn lasts from September to November. The weather is cool and there are often leaves falling from the trees. In Europe, winter lasts from December to February. The weather is cold and there is often snow. Spring lasts from March to May. The weather is warmer and there are often showers. Summer lasts from June to August. The weather is hot and there is often sunshine. Autumn lasts from September to November. The weather is cool and there are often leaves falling from the trees. In Asia, winter lasts from December to February. The weather is cold and there is often snow. Spring lasts from March to May. The weather is warmer and there are often showers. Summer lasts from June to August. The weather is hot and there is often sunshine. Autumn lasts from September to November. The weather is cool and there are often leaves falling from the trees. In Australia, winter lasts from June to August. Spring lasts from September to November. The weather is warmer and there are often showers. Summer lasts from December to February. The weather is hot and there is often sunshine. Autumn lasts from March to May. The weather is cool and there are often leaves falling from the trees. In South America, winter lasts from June to August. The weather is cold and there is often snow. Spring lasts from September to November. The weather is warmer and there are often showers. 
Summer lasts from December to February. The weather is hot and there is often sunshine. Autumn lasts from March to May. The weather is cool and there are often leaves falling from the trees. I've never been to Australia. It's been my ambition to visit the country ever since I was a child. My dreams of visiting the land down under were further fueled after watching several movies set in Australia, such as Crocodile Dundee and The Crocodile Hunter. In addition, I have always been fascinated by Australian animals, such as kangaroos, koalas, and crocodiles. Even though it is one of the most remote countries in the world, I hope to one day fulfill my dream of visiting Australia. There are many reasons why Australia is such an appealing destination. First of all, the country is immensely beautiful with its pristine beaches, lush rainforests, and unique desert landscapes. Secondly, Australia is home to some of the most interesting and exotic wildlife in the world. I would love to see Australian animals in their natural habitat and learn more about them. Finally, I am also interested in Australian culture and history. I think it would be fascinating to learn about the Aboriginal people and their way of life. If I am ever able to visit Australia, there are many things that I would like to do. First of all, I would like to go on a safari and see Australian animals up close. Secondly, I would love to explore the Great Barrier Reef and take a dip in its waters. Thirdly, I would like to visit Ayers Rock and marvel at its size and beauty. Lastly, I would simply like to spend time soaking up the unique atmosphere of Australia and enjoying its relaxed lifestyle. One day, I hope to fulfill my dream of visiting Australia. Until then, I will continue to arm myself with knowledge about the country so that I can fully appreciate it when I am ever lucky enough to go there. The kangaroo is a national symbol of Australia and one of the most recognizable animals in the world. These unique marsupials are found only in Australia and on its surrounding island chains. Although they are often associated with the outback, kangaroos can be found in all sorts of habitats across Australia, from rainforests to deserts. Given their iconic status, it's no surprise that there are many interesting facts about these fascinating creatures. Kangaroos are the largest marsupials in the world and can grow up to 2.1 meters tall. Males, or boomers, are significantly larger than females, weighing up to 90 kilograms. Female kangaroos tend to be around half this size at around 35 kilograms. The baby kangaroo known as a joey, is born after just 33 days and is only 2 centimeters long. From here, it must climb into its mother's pouch where it will live for the next 6 minutes 7 months until it is fully weaned. The primary threat to kangaroos is habitat loss due to agricultural development and urbanization. They are also hunted for meat and leather although this is less of a threat than it once was. In addition, introduced predators such as foxes and dogs pose a significant risk to kangaroo populations. 
Fortunately, measures such as fencing off areas of land and culling programs have helped to stabilize kangaroo numbers in recent years. There are four species of kangaroo found in Australia. The red kangaroo, eastern grey kangaroo, western grey kangaroo and antelopine wallaroo. The red kangaroo is the largest and can be found throughout central Australia. The eastern grey kangaroo ranges along the east coast from Queensland down to Victoria, while the smaller western grey inhabits southwest Australia. The antelopine wallaroo is found in northern parts of Australia near the Timor Sea. Kangaroos are well adapted to life down under and have some pretty incredible abilities. They can reach speeds of up to 70 km per hour over short distances, making them one of the fastest land animals on Earth. They can also jump up to 3 meters high in a single bound. Amazing when you consider that they weigh between 30 to 90 kilograms. One particularly impressive feat is their ability to survive without drinking water for long periods of time. They get most of the moisture they need from eating plants such as grasses and leaves. If you're ever lucky enough to see a kangaroo in the wild, or even at a zoo, take some time to appreciate these amazing creatures. From their distinctive appearance to their athleticism and agility, there's truly nothing like seeing a kangaroo in person. Have you heard about the kangaroo named Joey? Joey the kangaroo had always dreamed of traveling to Italy. She had seen pictures of the beautiful country in magazines and on TV, and it looked like a place she would love to visit. But Joey knew that it was a long way from her home in Australia, and she wasn't sure how she would ever make the trip. One day, Joey heard about a contest that was offering a free trip to Italy as the grand prize. The competition was to see who could come up with the best plan for how to travel from Australia to Italy. Joey was determined to win, and she spent hours brainstorming different ideas. Finally, she came up with the perfect plan. She would start by hopping all the way across Australia. Then she would take a boat to Indonesia, and from there she would hop to Malaysia. From Malaysia, she would take another boat to India, and then she would hop through Pakistan and Iran until she reached Turkey. From Turkey, it would be a relatively easy hop across the Mediterranean Sea to Italy. Joey was so excited about her plan that she couldn't wait to enter the contest. But when she told her friends and family about it, they all laughed at her and said there was no way it would work. They told her that kangaroos couldn't swim, so how could she possibly get from Australia to Indonesia? And even if she could make it that far, there was no way she could hop all the way across Europe. But Joey didn't let their doubt discourage her. She knew her plan was possible, and she was determined to make it happen. So with a farewell wave to her doubting friends and family, Joey set off on her journey. The first part of the trip went exactly as planned. Joey hopped all the way across Australia in just a few weeks, and then she took a boat to Indonesia without any trouble. 
that when she arrived in Indonesia, things started to go wrong. The boat had left her far from shore, and try as she might, Joey couldn't swim any closer. She floated around for hours before finally washing up on a small island. At first, Joey was relieved to be on dry land again. But then she realized that this wasn't just any island. It was an Indonesian prison island. And worse yet, there were no kangaroos on the island at all. Joey was completely alone in a strange place with no idea how to get home again. She spent the next few months trying to find a way off the island. She made friends with some of the other animals, and even tried to build a raft out of sticks and leaves. But nothing worked, and she was starting to lose hope. Then one day, Joey heard a strange noise coming from the other side of the island. It sounded like an engine. Could it be that someone was coming to rescue her? Joey ran as fast as she could toward the noise, and sure enough, there was a boat approaching the island. On board were none other than Nikola Tesla and his team of engineers. Tesla had been working on a new invention, a wireless transmitter that could send signals across great distances. He had been testing it out by sending messages back and forth between Australia and Italy, but he never expected that his signal would reach all the way to Indonesia. When he got Joey's distress call, he knew he had to come save her. They stayed friends forever since that. Joey even celebrated Christmas with Nicola the next year. In Italy. Italy is a country with a rich and vibrant culture, and its food is no different. From the humble beginnings of pasta and pizza to the more refined cuisine of today, Italian food has something for everyone. The history of Italian food is as long and complicated as the country itself. For centuries, Italy was divided into small city-states, each with their own unique customs and traditions. This can still be seen in the regional differences in cuisine across the country. In the north, where fresh produce is plentiful, dishes tend to be lighter and more delicate. In the south, where the climate is hotter and drier, dishes are often heartier and more robust. No matter what region you're in, though, there are certain staples that can be found throughout Italy. Pasta is perhaps the most iconic of all Italian foods, and it comes in myriad shapes and sizes. Pizza is another dish that is synonymous with Italy, and while it originated in Naples, it can now be found all over the world. Of course, Italian food isn't just about carbs, there are also plenty of delicious meats, cheeses, and vegetables to enjoy. One of the best things about Italian cuisine is that it makes use of simple ingredients to create truly incredible flavors. This is why Italians are so passionate about food, because they know that good ingredients are key to making a great meal. If you want to experience the true flavor of Italy, then you need to try some of its traditional dishes. These include classics like spaghetti carbonara, 
lasagna, and tiramisu. But don't limit yourself. There are so many different kinds of Italian food out there to explore. Let me tell you about Marco. There was something about the way the pasta slid through his fingers that made him feel alive. The Italians have always been a passionate people, and Marco was no different. He loved everything about his homeland, the food, the wine, the culture. The pasta was his true passion. He could remember the first time he had tasted it, as a young boy growing up in Naples. His mother had made it for him, and he had fallen in love with it instantly. Since then, he had dedicated his life to perfecting his craft. And now, as one of the most renowned pasta chefs in Italy, he finally felt like he had achieved his dream. Marco loved nothing more than creating new and exciting dishes for his customers to enjoy. He was always experimenting with different flavors and textures, and he loved nothing more than seeing the look of delight on people's faces when they tasted his food. Pasta was his art form, and he poured his heart and soul into every dish that he created. For Marco, there was nothing more satisfying than sitting down to a plate of perfectly cooked pasta, knowing that he had created something that would bring happiness to others. It was this passion that drove him to be the best chef that he could be, and it was this passion that made him truly happy. Every great chef has a secret ingredient that they believe makes their food taste better than anyone else's. For Marco, that ingredient is love. He truly believes that the love he puts into his cooking is what makes his pasta the best in the world. After finishing culinary school, Marco worked in some of the best restaurants in Italy. But he always dreamed of opening his own place where he could cook his own food the way he wanted to. And so, eventually, he did just that. Marco's restaurant quickly became one of the most popular places to eat in all of Italy. People came from all over to try Marco's famous pasta dishes. And they were not disappointed. The love and care that Marco put into every dish was evident, and people could taste it in every bite. As word of mouth about Marco's restaurant spread, more and more people began coming from all over the world to try the food. And soon enough, Marco had become a world-famous chef with people clamoring to get a reservation at his restaurant. But no matter how busy he gets, or how famous he becomes, Marco will always remember what made him successful in the first place. Love. And as long as he continues to cook with love, people will continue to come back for more. Love. What is love? Is it a feeling? An emotion? A physical sensation? Or is it something more? Something deeper? Something that transcends all of these things and touches our very souls? I believe that love is all of these things and more. 
is the most powerful force in the universe, capable of both destroying and creating entire worlds. It can make us feel like we are on top of the world one moment, and then bring us crashing down the next. Love is a roller coaster ride that never seems to end, and yet we continue to cling to it tightly, knowing that despite everything, it is worth the ride. Why do we love? What is it about this emotion that keeps us coming back for more, even when it has caused us so much pain? I think it is because love is the only thing in this world that truly makes us feel alive. It is an addiction that we cannot kick, no matter how hard we try. And like all addicts, we always come back for just one more hit, hoping against hope that this time will be different. That this time, love will finally give us the happy ending we so desperately desire. But alas, more often than not, love ends in heartbreak. And yet, we continue to chase after it, because we cannot help ourselves. We are creatures of habit, and love is our biggest addiction. But what if, against all odds, we actually do find our happy ending? What if love finally gives us the fairy tale ending we have been dreaming of? Is it worth the risk? I say yes. Even though love can sometimes be a cruel mistress, I would rather take my chances with her than go through life without ever experiencing her power. I had the most delicious apple the other day. Apples are one of the most popular fruits in the world. They are a source of vitamins and minerals, and they are also a delicious and healthy snack. Apples come in many different colors, including red, green, and yellow. There are many different types of apples, such as Granny Smith apples, which are tart and acidic, or Golden Delicious apples, which are sweet and mellow. No matter what type of apple you like, there is sure to be an apple out there that you will enjoy eating. Apples are not only a healthy snack, but they can also be used in many different recipes. Apple pie is a classic dessert that is enjoyed by many people. Apple crisp is another popular recipe that uses apples as the main ingredient. If you are looking for a healthy way to add fruit to your diet, then consider adding apples to your next meal or snack. Not only are apples a delicious and healthy food, but they can also be used for many different purposes. Apples can be used as decoration for your home or office. They can also be given as gifts to friends and family. If you are looking for a unique and thoughtful gift, then consider giving someone an apple. Apples are a versatile fruit that can be enjoyed in many different ways. Whether you eat them whole, use them in a recipe, or give them as a gift, apples are sure to bring a smile to your face. There's nothing quite like your grandmother's apple pie. The flaky crust, the tart apples, and the sweet sugar filling all come together to create a truly delicious dessert. And, of course, the best part is that it always brings back memories of childhood. 
for me, those memories are of my grandmother making her famous apple pies. I can still see her in the kitchen, rolling out the dough and slicing the apples with practiced ease. The smell of cinnamon and sugar would fill the air as she mixed up the filling, and I would eagerly await the moment when she would slide the pie into the oven. The wait was always worth it. When the pie was done baking, its golden top would be dotted with bubbly juices from the filling. My grandmother would always let it cool for a bit before serving it, but I could never resist sneaking a warm slice. Or two. And, of course, no matter how much I ate, there was always room for a generous scoop of vanilla ice cream on top. Just thinking about my grandmother's apple pie makes my mouth water. It really is the perfect dessert and it will always hold a special place in my heart. My grandmother is the happiest person I know. At 92 years old, she has lived a long and fulfilling life. Even though she is no longer able to get around like she used to, she still enjoys her life immensely. Grandma was born in a small town in Italy and grew up in a large family with six brothers and sisters. She always loved spending time with her siblings, especially when they would all go down to the river to swim and play together. Even though they didn't have much money, my grandmother always felt like she was rich because of the love within her family. After getting married, my grandmother moved to America with my grandfather. They had a tough time at first, but eventually they were able to find work and start their own family. My grandmother raised four children while also working as a seamstress from home. She always found time for her kids even when she was sewing clothes for other people late into the night. Throughout her life, my grandmother has faced many challenges, but she has always been a fighter. She has an amazing ability to see the silver lining in every situation, and this has helped her stay positive throughout her life. Even when things are tough, she knows that there is always something to be grateful for. My grandmother is truly the epitome of happiness. No matter what life throws her way, she always manages to maintain her positive outlook on life. There is an inherent randomness to the world that can never be fully predicted or understood. This randomness manifests itself in many ways, from the weather to the behavior of people. It is the source of both good and bad luck and can never be fully controlled. Some people believe that they can control the randomness of the world through various superstitious rituals. Others believe that they can harness the power of randomness to their advantage through things like gambling or playing the stock market. But in reality, no one can ever fully control or predict the randomness of the world. The randomness of the world can be both good and bad. It can bring about unexpected surprises or results that no one could have ever predicted. It can also lead to chaos and destruction, as seen in natural disasters or accidents. No matter what people believe, the randomness of the world is always present and always will be. It is the source of both good and bad luck, and can never be fully controlled. 
So the next time you experience something good or bad that you can't explain, remember that it's just the randomness of the world at work. Speaking of randomness, I always wanted to learn to paint. I would see all these beautiful paintings in museums and galleries and think to myself, I wish I could do that. But for some reason, I never took the time to learn. Maybe I was afraid I wouldn't be good at it. Or maybe I just didn't have the time. But whatever the reason, I never took that first step. But recently, I've been thinking about it again. And you know what? I'm going to learn to paint. I'm not going to be afraid of it anymore. I'm going to find the time to do it. And I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. I'm not sure what my first painting will be. Art is often seen as a form of expression, a way to communicate one's innermost thoughts and feelings. However, art can also be seen as a form of entertainment, a way to escape the mundane and everyday. Whether it is a painting, sculpture, or performance, art can provide a much-needed reprieve from the boredom of everyday life. For centuries, people have used art as a form of escape. The ancient Greeks would often tell stories through their art, using paintings and sculptures to depict their myths and legends. The Romans also used art as a form of entertainment, often put in on plays and other public performances. Even today, People use art as a form of escape, whether it is going to the movies, watching a play, or listening to music. Art can be a powerful tool for both escape and expression. It can provide a way to vent our frustrations and express our deepest emotions. It can also be a way to escape the mundane and everyday to explore new and different worlds. Whether we use it for escape or expression, art is an important part of our lives. I went to a museum last week. I was walking through the museum when I saw it. The painting was unlike anything I had ever seen before. It was a beautiful landscape, with rolling hills and a bright blue sky. But what really caught my eye was the way the sunlight was shining on the trees and the flowers. It was like the painting was alive. I couldn't take my eyes off it. I felt like I was being pulled into the painting. I felt happy and peaceful, like I was in a different world. I forgot about everything else around me. I just stared at the painting, lost in its beauty. It was only when someone came and stood next to me that I realized how long I had been staring at the painting. I turned to see who it was, and I saw a woman with tears in her eyes. She was looking at the painting with the same look of wonder that I had. We both just stood there, staring at the painting. 
It was like we were sharing a moment. We didn't need to say anything, because we both knew how special the painting was. We were both feeling the same thing. Eventually, we both walked away from the painting, but it stayed with me. I can't forget how it made me feel. It was like the painting woke up something inside of me. Something that had been sleeping for a long time. The painting made me feel happy and alive. It was like a breath of fresh air. It was like the painting was telling me to live my life to the fullest. The artist's name was Artie. Artie had always loved art. As a child, she would spend hours in her room, drawing and painting. She was never without a sketchbook and a set of paints, and she would often be found sitting in the park, people watching and drawing the scenes around her. She knew from a young age that she wanted to be an artist when she grew up. And so, after finishing high school, she packed up her bags and moved to the city to pursue her dream. Artie quickly found a job as an assistant at a local gallery. It wasn't the most glamorous job, but it paid the bills and allowed her to be surrounded by art all day long. She was happy. Eventually, Artie started to sell some of her own paintings on the side. At first, it was just to make a bit of extra money. But soon, she was selling more and more of her own work and making a name for herself in the local art scene. Now, Artie is a successful artist. She has her own studio where she creates new pieces every day. She has had her work featured in galleries all over the world, and she has even been commissioned to create pieces for private collections. Artie loves her life as an artist. It's everything she ever dreamed it would be, exciting, creative, and inspiring. Her most famous painting is called The Wanderer. The painting depicts a woman standing in a field of tall grass with the sun setting behind her. The woman is looking off into the distance as if she's searching for something. Many people have interpreted the painting differently, but Artie says that it's about longing for something more. We all have a part of ourselves that wants to wander, she explains. It's what makes us human. The Wanderer has been praised by critics and loved by art lovers all over the world. It hangs in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, and it's considered one of Artie's most iconic works. Artie herself is an enigmatic figure. She's rarely been photographed, and she doesn't give many interviews. But her paintings speak for themselves. They're beautiful and poignant, and they capture the human experience in a way that few other artists can. Poignant, that is a funny word, right? The word poignant can be used to describe something that is deeply moving or touching. 
It can also be used to describe something that is bittersweet, as it brings up both happy and sad memories. For example, a poignant moment in your life might be when you graduate from college and realize that you are about to embark on a new journey. The word poignant is often used to describe memories or moments that make you feel both happy and sad at the same time. When something is described as being poignant, it usually means that it has a deep emotional impact. This can be positive or negative, depending on the context. Either way, it is a memory that brings up strong emotions and is not easily forgotten. The word poignant can also be used to describe something that is bittersweet. For example, you might look back on your time in college with both happiness and sadness. You are happy because you had such great experiences and made so many memories but you are also sad because it is now over and you have to move on to the next phase of your life. This bittersweet feeling is often referred to as poignant. So, in short, the word poignant describes something that is deeply moving or touching and often has a strong emotional impact. It can be used to describe both happy and sad memories as well as experiences that are both good and bad. There once was a man who was very eloquent. He had a way with words and could make people feel emotions they didn't even know they had. One day, he was thinking about all of the words in the English language and how some of them just didn't seem to fit. That's when he came up with the word poignant. It was perfect for those moments that were both sad and happy, bitter and sweet. He knew that this word would resonate with people and it did. To this day, people use the word poignant to describe those moments that are both beautiful and tragic. Philosophy is an interesting field of study. It helps us to think critically about the world around us and to try to make sense of it. It can be a difficult subject to understand, but it is worth the effort. There are many different types of philosophy, but they all share some common features. Philosophy is a way of thinking about the world that is based on reason and logic. It is not a belief system, but a way of trying to understand the world. Philosophers use reason and logic to try to understand the world. They make arguments and try to persuade others to see things their way. They also look at the evidence and try to find the best explanation for what they see. Philosophers are not just people who sit around and think about deep things. They also apply their thinking to real-world problems. Many philosophers have made important contributions to science, politics, and other fields. Philosophy is a difficult subject, but it is worth the effort. It can help us to understand the world and to make better decisions. Many people think that philosophy is only for people who are interested in deep, theoretical questions. But philosophy is relevant to everyone. It can help us to understand the world and to make better decisions. Most people encounter philosophy in their everyday lives, even if they don't realize it. 
whenever you make a decision, you are using philosophy. For example, when you decide what to wear in the morning, you are using philosophy. You are making a decision based on your values and beliefs. Philosophy can also help us to understand the world around us. It can help us to make sense of the news, to understand history, and to understand other cultures. Philosophy is a way of thinking that is based on reason and logic. It is not a belief system, but a way of trying to understand the world. Philosophers use reason and logic to try to understand the world. They make arguments and try to persuade others to see things their way. They also look at the evidence and try to find the best explanation for what they see. Philosophers are not just people who sit around and think about deep things. Kids are often seen as innocent and naive. But what if we could learn a lot from them about life and how to live it? Kids have a lot to teach us about living life to the fullest. They are always exploring and trying new things. They are fearless and willing to take risks. And they are always learning and growing. Kids also have a lot of fun. They know how to enjoy the moment and have a good time. They are spontaneous and always up for a good time. So what can we learn from kids about life and how to live it? First, we can learn to be more explorers. We can try new things and take risks. We can be fearless and learn from our mistakes. Second, we can learn to enjoy the moment. We can have more fun and be more spontaneous. We can live in the present and savor the good times. Lastly, we can learn to always keep learning. We can grow and change as we experience new things. We can become better versions of ourselves. So let's take a page from the kids' book of life and learn to live a little bit more like them. It just might make life a little bit more fun and rewarding. Having fun is one of the most important things in life. It's a chance to let loose, be yourself, and just enjoy the moment. It's an essential part of our well-being and something that we should all make time for. There are so many benefits to having fun. It's a great way to relieve stress, boost your mood, and increase your overall happiness. It can also help you stay healthy and fit, both mentally and physically. Making time for fun is important for everyone, no matter how busy you are. It's a chance to recharge and refocus, so you can be your best self. And when you're your best self, you're better able to handle whatever life throws your way. So go ahead and have some fun today. It's good for you. And who knows, you might just enjoy yourself in the process.
You know what is fun? Cats. There's something about cats that just makes them so endearing. Maybe it's their independent nature or their soft fur. Whatever the reason, cats have been a part of human society for centuries and their popularity only seems to be increasing. Cats make great pets because they are low maintenance and relatively easy to care for. They are also very independent so they don't require as much attention as some other pets. And, let's be honest, they're just so darn cute. If you're thinking about getting a cat, there are a few things you should keep in mind. First, you'll need to provide a litter box for your cat to use. It's also a good idea to get your cat some toys to keep them entertained, as well as a scratching post to help them keep their claws healthy. Cats are generally pretty low-key creatures, but that doesn't mean they don't like to have some fun. Many cats enjoy playing with string or chasing a laser pointer around. And when it comes to cuddling, well, let's just say that cats can be surprisingly affectionate creatures. The great debate between cats and dogs has been going on for centuries. Each side has its own loyal followers, and there is no end in sight to this battle. As far as we can tell, it all started with a simple disagreement over which is the better pet. From there, things snowballed out of control, and the two groups have been at each other's throats ever since. There are a few key points that both sides always bring up in the debate. For example, dogs will always argue that they are the better protectors, while cats will counter that they are cleaner and require less work. Then there are the more general arguments like dogs being too needy and cats being too aloof. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to personal preference. There are some people who are able to see the good in both animals and appreciate them for different reasons. But for the most part, the debate between cats and dogs remains as heated as ever. Who knows where it will go from here?